Hey, this is Steve, VU6WZ. This is a quick review of the new nine circle receive array combiner board that I recently designed. You know, the main change uh, on this board are the integrated common mode chokes to replace those outboard chokes that were required for this array. But I've also included some, uh, rather an option for some gas discharge tubes on the control and 12 volt VCC line. Uh, the new design also has a larger overall footprint, so there's a little more room for installing and tightening those F connectors. You know, it's just a little less crowded. And by using those same uh, SMD common mode chokes in transformer mode, uh, we're able to replace some of the magic T's. So now the construction's easier uh, since we only have to wind uh, two of those binocular cores. If you're watching this video, you most likely already know all about the nine circle array developed by John W1FV. It's a central vertical surrounded by eight other uh, short high impedance verticals. But at any one time, it's actually just a three element uh, N fire array. Uh, John sorted out the optimum phase and amplitude of each element to develop this uh, really excellent pattern. You know, the RDF of the array is around 12. Uh, and here I show the azimuth pattern of the array overlaid uh, with a 900 foot beverage. And you can see they're almost identical. So if you think about it here, you, what have you got? You've got really, uh, uh, it's like having eight 900 foot beverages uh, all in a 60 foot radius uh, circle. Pretty effective receive antenna. Here's a view in the field of uh, my installation. You can clearly see three of the elements there and a few of the others surrounding the central vertical. What John discovered when testing the array was that this excellent pattern uh, became uh, degraded uh, when the RG6 feed lines were all bonded together uh, at the combiner box. In fact, to the right is the distorted pattern that John modeled uh, by including the feed lines into his model. Uh, the issue is that the combiner board has a low impedance ground plane, so all of the RG6 feed lines are uh, bonded together. Well, the solution is simple. We just add common mode chokes on each feed line just before uh, they enter the combiner box. Uh, but don't forget, you know, that's not required at each vertical because each uh, high impedance amplifier has a braid breaker isolation transformer there. There have been a number of different field implementations uh, for these common mode chokes. Here's a dual core uh, choke with uh, using uh, two F connectors. And here's what I've done uh, using these large type 31 snap-on uh, toroids. However, this can get expensive, uh, you know, and there's also added construction complexity and adding more connectors uh, could uh, and can degrade uh, system reliability. So how about we use these little guys made by Murata? Uh, these are small surface mount devices and are <laughs> and they only cost $1.60. They're packaged in this little uh, square form, uh, and they're basically a little tiny toroidal core. Uh, the schematic is shown on the uh, top right. Uh, there are four devices uh, in the 5000 series of these, with increasing inductance from 0.47 millihenries, that's 470 microhenries, with increasing inductance to uh, 4.7 millihenries, or 4,700 uh, microhenries. Here are the data sheets uh, on those guys showing the common mode choking impedance. Uh, at the top here is the, uh, the lowest impedance unit at 470 microhenries. It's got a choking impedance of 3000 uh, ohms uh, on the 160 meter band. While the higher inductance unit has got a spectacular 15,000 ohms, 15K ohms on the 160 uh, meter band. That's, a, that's pretty spectacular choking impedance. I bought a few of these units and decided to test them with my VNA. I built up a little test jig uh, by scoring out a small piece of copper clad board. And I also compared them to uh, a binocular core uh, shown on the right here too. I tested them for common mode uh, choke insertion loss. You know, and they all tested about the same at about 0.14 dB uh, of loss on uh, 160 meters. I tested them in transformer mode for both insertion loss and phase stability because I wanted to use uh, uh, one of these in the uh, 180 degree phase flip transformer in the uh, combiner circuit. I also tested them in transformer mode as a magic T for both insertion loss and port to port isolation. 
My conclusion was to use the 5474C units. That's the 470 microhenry device, the lowest inductance uh, unit. Uh, it seemed to be the best uh, when used in transformer mode and for the magic T's. And in fact, it tested about the same or even slightly better than using a binocular core unit. Uh, obviously, for the common mode choking uh, configuration, clearly the 5475, uh, or the highest inductance unit, was the, uh, the unit of choice considering the 15,000 ohms of uh, choking impedance. So here is my new combiner schematic using nine of the 5475 uh, common mode chokes uh, at, at each feed line. Uh, two of the 5474 uh, units uh, for the magic uh, T's uh, and one of those same transformers for the 180 degree uh, phase flip transformer T12. Uh, now we only need to wind two uh, binocular cores. Uh, one um, uh, uh, for the 18 and a half, three quarter ohm to 75 ohm RF output transformer and one impedance matching auto transformer uh, coming out of a delay line uh, two. Here uh, is the detail um, of the uh, auto transformer. It's basically uh, made with two turns of red wire and uh, five turns of blue wire. Uh, in a binocular core, uh, one turn is uh, uh, out and back. So that's uh, one turn and two turns is uh, uh, doing that twice. Uh, you can easily just count the loops on the opposing side to determine the number of turns that you have uh, on your core. Uh, here is, uh, I'm showing how the blue and the red wires coming out of the, the one hole go to the red and the blue as annotated on the silk screen uh, and out of the other hole to these uh, two annotated here, red and blue. Obviously you can choose any, uh, any color uh, you want. Um, uh, the RF out uh, impedance matching transformer, I chose uh, to use, uh, design it as an isolation or braid breaker transformer with a split uh, uh, windings. Uh, you know, this way the feed line to the rig is also going to be uh, isolated, uh, just as all of the feed lines to the verticals. These are, this is easy to wind. It's uh, just three turns on the one side and six turns on the other uh, side uh, for a 75 ohm match. I've also annotated on the silk screen, uh, if you wanted to run with a 50 ohm system, it would would be five turns here and eight turns there if you chose to do that. These little SMD Murata chokes have a dot on the package uh, for uh, annotating uh, pin one. Uh, on the PCB footprint, uh, you'll notice uh, there's a little square pad uh, and, and that is to uh, denote pin one. Uh, however, uh, you know, as you can see in the schematic, these guys really are non-polarized, so it really doesn't matter how you install them. Uh, you can't go wrong no matter how you put them on. Uh, using a small tip uh, on your soldering iron, it's really not uh, too hard to install these guys on the board, but, you know, make sure you use flux. I mean, don't try it without using uh, flux. Now, you know, I find a paste is the best. You know, a little glob uh, with a toothpick on each of the pads. I stick the unit down, you know, uh, hold it hold it in place. I load your iron with a little bit of uh, solder and tack down one of the one of the pins uh, uh, to, you know, to hold it there in place and then, uh, you know, and then do the others. You know, my board is still pretty messy here. I need to clean up the uh, solder flux. So proceed to populate the board with uh, all of the parts. The uh, silk screen shows all uh, of the values, so it's pretty easy to do. Uh, here you can see uh, the gas discharge tubes uh, that I've uh, chosen to install. Uh, if you don't want to, uh, you know, just omit them. Uh, you don't need to include those if you don't want to. Uh, I lost all of the snubber diodes on every one of the all four relays here one summer. Uh, I, I think I, I took a ground impulse from a nearby lightning strike and uh, it either entered via the VCC 12 volt line or one of the control lines, but that's why I chose to uh, to include these. Um, you'll notice that the, there are a number eight uh, stainless steel screws here to provide a pinout for both the VCC and the relay control lines. Um, but also notice if you don't want to do that, uh, I've got uh, also a uh, pinouts here for uh, wire uh, connections if you uh, choose to you know, use a terminal strip. Now, don't forget that the F connectors go on the back side of the PCB board uh, as annotated with the white boxes uh, on the silk screen. 
Uh, you can see the VCC and uh, control line uh, number eight uh, stainless steel screws here. I use uh, lock washers uh, on them. Uh, remember that the enclosure has to be uh, plastic. Uh, I'm showing the schematic here because notice here that the entire point of this design is to isolate each uh, RG6 line uh, from each other uh, and so each F connector is isolated from the common ground plane on the board and the CMC's isolate them from uh, each other so obviously a metal box uh, would not work. Um, the ground lug uh, which is on the board uh, is meant for a dedicated uh, ground rod uh, located right at the uh, combiner box. Uh, you may also notice an RF choke here uh, on the ground of the uh, feed line going to the rig and that's to provide a return ground path back to the shack for the uh, uh, 12 volt line. I find it's best and easiest to use the board itself uh, as a drill template to mark out the holes but make sure that you put the board on the right side up. It's more than a little bit painful uh, of a mistake to discover you've drilled out a perfect mirror image of what you really want. Uh, here I show how I use three uh, washers behind the nut on the uh, screws. Um, I just used some washers that I had, had on hand, but I found this uh, matched exactly the shoulder depth of the F connectors. Um, here is a picture of the board uh, mounted inside the lid uh, of the box. Uh, and here is my very uh, non-professional uh, annotation. I tested the box using my VNA as per the very excellent instructions by John and the YCC uh, club there uh, in the original documentation. Uh, I'll include that at the bottom of the video. The box, te the box tested really well. Uh, in fact, the phase was even closer to perfect uh, than my other two combiners. Uh, so now let's go out in the field and I'll show you how my install went. Fairly mild day today out at the remote. I'm going to install the new uh, nine circle combiner box. This is my large uh, containment box that I got from a home building store. Had to replace the lid. A moose chewed the uh, plastic top off of it. Let's open it up. I'll show you what I got here right now. Here's the current installation with the existing combiner box, which uh, I designed and has, uh, this particular one has a integrated 2N5109 amplifier. I won't have that and don't have that on my new box. But, uh, you know, the idea of the new box is eliminate all these uh, clamp-on Type 31 toroids. Anyway, I'm going to pull this out and put the new box in. So I just screwed the box uh, for the, the combiner uh, onto the back of the uh, large uh, storage bin here. Uh, you know, I really don't know why guys tend to feel compelled to mount the circuit board inside a box. I don't know, it's just something like we can't get it out of our head, but it way, makes way more sense as far as I'm concerned to mount the circuit board on the lid of the box. We attach the box out in the field and then basically we just can screw the lid on uh, make our connections. If we ever have a problem or need to do some forensics and uh, bring the box inside, that's real simple. We just disconnect everything, uh, unscrew the lid and take it inside to do some work on it. Really, uh, really to me, it's the best way to go. All right, got the box hooked up. Uh, you'll notice that I haven't bothered yet to remove the Type 31 toroids. I don't know, it's kind of cold out here. That's a project for another day, but uh, I'm going to see what the performance is like now, if there's any change at all. I'm not really expecting a huge uh, difference. Uh, by the way, the new layout uh, with the larger uh, footprint on the board makes it a lot easier to get uh, access to the F connectors to, uh, you know, reach in between uh, and tighten them. Make sure you get your 7 16th wrench out and tighten these uh, F connectors really well. That's important. Uh, loose connectors are a real problem with uh, low output receive antennas. Okay, what about results? Well, the box works and performs as it should with all the usual front to back and noise null tests. You know, I ran the 160 meter uh, CQ contest uh, this past weekend and it uh, performed well. Uh, can I say it's better? Well, you know, <laughs> that's really not possible without true A, B testing. And I mean, I can't do that. Um, and also, you know, let's be honest, I still have those clamp on uh, chokes on there. So it's really uh, perhaps an evaluation that is uh, still ongoing.
Now look, I want to be very, very clear here. I'm just sharing my project. And if others want to build one, I provide a uh, PCB file so you can uh, build your own. And if you do, you know, please uh, give me some feedback. Um, you know, maybe this is, you know, kind of like a wiki project here and, you know, it can evolve uh, with input, uh, for, you know, from others. You know, <laughs> actually, you know, the current uh, PCB file is, you know, KiCad files already up to version uh, 3.1. Uh, be aware that the PI4, Charlie Charlie guys, uh, asked me if they could sell my boards, my other versions, and uh, I agreed. Uh, but, you know, I get nothing from that, and I don't want anything. Uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to sell this uh, this new design, but, you know, perhaps Google PI4 CC and, and um, uh, see if maybe they'll, uh, they'll take it on. I don't know. Uh, I will include uh, a full PCB file in both KiCad format and, and also uh, in a zipped Gerber file so you can uh, get your own boards made. Uh, for personal and political reasons, I got to be honest, I try really, really hard not to buy stuff from China. Um, but I got five of these boards uh, shipped to my house, uh, sadly, from China for 30 bucks. You know, I tried hard, but the, any of the U.S. and Canadian uh, makers, manufacturers, they're 10 times that. So, you know, I think perhaps it's because of the size of the footprint on this guy. Uh, anyway, um, I'll also put a BOM uh, file link at the bottom of this video. Check that out. Uh, you know, it'll include everything, including that ham and box that I found uh, fits the board, you know, really well. Uh, 73, this is Steve, V6WZ. Go ahead, build yourself a nine circle array and uh, do some experimentation. Talk to you later.